mentioned earlier, my name is Shannon Burnick. I'm an accessibility specialist with the Office of Accessibility Services here on campus. And I'm really excited that you guys were able to join us um, today. We are going to be doing a slightly different format um, for today's um, meeting than we have been previously, because we do have several uh, students joining us to serve as panelists. Um, so I am going to go ahead and give each of them a chance to introduce themselves. Um, if Carly, if you'd like to get us started. My name is Carly Fulcher. I just finished my junior year as a cello performance major in the College of Music. And I'm the president of the University of Choice Initiative at FSU. Hi, everyone. My name is Mira Gatanis. I am a junior at Florida State University, my major being Media and Communication Studies. And I'm the vice president of the University of, of Choice Initiative. Um, and I'm excited to work and uh, talk with all of y'all today. Thank you. Thank you. And Nimna, would you like to go next? Of course. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Nimna Gabadaj. I'm a rising junior here at Florida State, majoring in finance and political science. Um, and I currently serve as the deputy chief of staff within the Student Government Association. Great. And I'm so, so thankful that all of you were able to join us um, today so that um, you can speak to the topic um, in terms of a student perspective, um, which is so important for our incoming freshmen um, to have an opportunity to hear. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so that we can um, get started on our presentation. And of course, our topic today is um, engaging family supports um, to help you succeed at school. And one of the things that I like to start with um, for these first year Fridays is some of the differences that you might encounter between high school and college. And of course, the overarching theme is that you're transitioning from a shared responsibility with your family um, and community in high school to independence or independent living here at college, where you're going to begin to build your own community. And some of the things um, that are that we're going to highlight that are some differences, first of all, are those living arrangements. At home, you've likely lived with family members um, who you um, may have become very comfortable with. A lot of students often have their own bedroom at home. Um, and of course, at school here at college, you may be sharing your space now with a roommate. Um, it could potentially be someone that you haven't met before that you don't know. Um, and of course, you might not have that entirely private space to retreat to when you need it. Of course, household chores um, will need to be um, taken care of here at college. Unfortunately, we might not have our family members um, to share that responsibility anymore. So we'll have to do things um, like washing dishes or vacuuming and dusting. And then, of course, laundry is always um, a big one um, because um, oftentimes we might have had someone at home take care of that. And now it's something that we have to do ourselves. And of course, meal planning is, is another important piece of those, those living arrangements. You might have the opportunity to prepare meals in your dorm um, that you may or may not share with your roommates. And then of course, um, in the bigger picture, there are those life skills that you've likely been developing over time, um, but they're going to become more essential that you take the lead on them when you come to college. Some of the ones that usually stand out for our students are time management. So you'll have to make sure that you get to classes on time. You'll have to make sure that if you have a doctor's appointment that you get there on time. Have to make sure that any extracurricular activities fit into your schedule and that you allot time for them. So it's a lot of planning, scheduling, and organizing. Of course, budgeting um, becomes a concern. Um, you may have to decide um, how far the money that you have will go for the semester and make some choices about where you're gonna spend it and where you're gonna cut back. Of course, healthcare, nutrition, and exercise will be a very important um, category for you to pay attention to, especially as a student who experiences a disability. Um, you may also be responsible for your own health care now, um, and you may be able to purchase that through the university. And then, of course, self-care is another important life skill um, that you'll also be primarily responsible for as a college student and that you'll have to create a plan for. 
So with those topics in mind, um, the importance of engaging family um, becomes a, a really big issue in college because we are transitioning, you know, we are going from that shared responsibility with your family to greater independence. Um, however, no one gets through this life alone, right? We all need support. Um, we all depend on each other. And so we have um, what we call the freshman myth. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here. Um, the freshman myth refers to this idea that college freshmen are overly optimistic and confident in their ability to manage the challenges that they will encounter at college. So they overestimate their ability um, to either deal with the challenges that come up or perhaps don't anticipate just how challenging the events will be. And unfortunately, this results in a high dropout rate oftentimes among college freshmen. So with that in mind, I'd like to open up to our panelists so that they could share a little bit about how their expectations when they were entering their freshman year were a little different than what they actually experienced. And I'll just let you guys jump in um, in any order that you'd like to. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, you know, I think, you know, coming into college, like a lot of other students, I really expected to kind of have everything figured out, you know, right away. But the truth is, you know, when you're transitioning into such, you know, new environment, you know, there's going to be a learning curve. Um, so I just think it's important to just know that it's okay to be unsure of yourself from time to time. And it's important to give yourself that time and kind of patience to you know, in that process, you know, personally what helped me was just not overwhelming myself, you know, within my first few months here and giving myself some grace to kind of just settle into the lifestyle and just get a feel for my surroundings, really. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that idea of giving yourself grace, right? It is a really big transition and it, it takes time um, to get to where we want to be with it. Um, Mira, I think, do you want to jump in next? Sure thing, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So, oh, thank you. When it comes to the freshman myth and things like that, for me, I'm very much an optimist. So I kind of go in full, like, I go in all in and I kind of start working and I get involved in a bunch of different things. And, you know, you see how college experience is represented in media and how it differs from your actual experience. So there was some differences there for me. So I think it's really, it's, it can be challenging because you have this idea from how what you've watched in movies or read in books and then seen in TV shows on what you think the college experience is going to be like. And then it's completely different from how that is. Cause I got involved in a bunch of different organizations. I met a lot of great people, but you know, of course there was nothing really when it comes to the partying or anything like that. It was more kind of nose to the grindstone when it comes to work. But when you were talking about the self care that really, really hit me. Cause that was something that was really important to me because when it comes to when I was getting involved in all these different organizations you know I feel like especially in the disability community you try to push and do two or three times the work as other individuals because you're working on kind of compensating in a sense so I think it's important to realize to take that space for you know um, for grace and um, taking a step back and realizing there is a capacity for what I can do and I need to make sure that I'm focusing my energy on what's important. Absolutely. I, I think that's such a great um, point that you brought up. It's so important not only to manage our expectations in general, um, but also to realize um, what um, what is best for us in terms of managing those disability related symptoms that we might experience. And self care is a great way, um, a great way to manage those symptoms and also kind of balance those expectations that we have for ourselves. Carly, did you want to jump in on this one as well? Sure. I find this concept of the freshman myth interesting because my experience as a freshman was actually the opposite. You know, I was already pretty confident that I'd be able to succeed academically in college. I wasn't worried about that. It was more so the independent living aspect. And can I tolerate a roommate, especially since I grew up without siblings? You know, will I be able to take care of myself in that environment and get where I need to be? on time, especially on such a big campus. So I was a, quite a bit less confident in that, but I found that I actually had lower expectations for myself than really what I was capable of. 
So that helped a lot. And just coming to college and experiencing that was a big confidence builder. And another thing that helped was that I had the opportunity to attend a summer program at a college the summer after my senior year of high school. So I got used to that environment. Now that was at a public school in New York. It was quite a bit smaller than FSU, but I was able to see, you know, what it was like to be in that environment day to day, how much unstructured free time you had. That was something that was surprising to me. Uh, and just that experience, I was able to scale up. So I had better expectations of what FSU would be like. I really agree with what the others were saying about grace. That's very important. I would advise freshmen to just be patient with yourself. College has really been a big lesson in patience because it's such a hard thing. It's going to college is probably the biggest event in many students' lives. Because you, you figure you've been in public school for the majority of your life and now you're going to college, completely different environment. So just have patience with yourself, be open to those new experiences and realize that you will make mistakes. It'll be frustrating at times. That transition of learning to be independent and what I call a real adult is difficult for you and your family. And that's something that I'm still seeing people struggle with even further along in the undergraduate experience, you know, my classmates. So it's not an easy process, but you're capable of more than you think. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I like that perspective on it. While there are some challenges, there also are opportunities within those challenges. And sometimes we find out that we have strengths we didn't realize we had, whether those were within ourselves or external resources like our relationships with our family. Um, so coming back to our PowerPoint, um, it's important then um, with this idea of a transition that we have support to help ease any of the difficulties of it. And support can be provided in so many ways. Um, today, we're going to focus on three of those being emotional, financial, and academic. And before we begin, I just want to note that each student and family is unique. So each student will have, um, while we all share commonalities in, in our needs and wants, um, each student is going to have a more particular experience and may need more support in one area than in other. Likewise, each family is different. They have different resources to offer. They have different relationships with their, with their student. And so, um, they may need more support or be able to offer more support in one area than another. So with that in mind, we want to talk about today ways that we can engage those family supports in the areas where our family is a resource for us. But then we also want to talk about some of um, the campus supports that we have as you begin to build a family here on campus. So we're gonna go ahead and start with emotional. Um, and in terms of staying connected for families, it's it's really hard um, to let our students go. And likewise, as a student, it's, it's really hard um, to leave home. So it's important if you have those solid emotional relationships with your family that you schedule check-ins. And of course, nowadays that's so easy with text messages, emails, um, FaceTime, there's all kinds of ways to make sure that we're checking in with each other. And of course, you can come up with a schedule that works for you. Um, for some people, it might be a daily text. For other people, they might do a Zoom meeting um, once every week. And so you really want to find what works for you. And of course, that might take time um, to develop. But we definitely want to make sure we're checking in with those people who support us emotionally. And if that's your family for you, it's great to make the time for them. Um, other ways that families can become involved are participating in some of the programs that are offered by our new student and family programs. And one of those is the Family Weekend. And so um, there is a link on the PowerPoint to Family Weekend. This week, it, or this year, it looks like it's October 1st through the 3rd. And this is a time when they encourage families to visit and participate in different activities um, that they've planned for families and students to engage in. The second option that's on the PowerPoint is family resources. So maybe you're not able to travel to campus and that's okay. There's still lots of other ways that as a family member, you can stay involved. And of course, there's links here on their family programs page. So they do have an e-newsletter. They have coffee and conversations, which is very popular. And then they also have a family blog. 
And then of course, um, it's also important to begin building your campus family. And in terms of building a campus, campus family, there are so many ways to do that. Of course, one of the ones that we promote is our University of Choice, which our panelists um, are representing for us today. And I'm gonna let them talk a little bit more about. Um, but we also have the Welcome FSU Week. And if you just go ahead and scroll down a little bit, it has all of these great links to student organizations, student government, fraternities and sororities, and intramural sports. So this is a great resource for you to come and learn more about all of these student groups on campus and see which one you might want to make part of your campus family. Additionally, it's always important to engage with faculty and staff. One of the ways to do that is, is joining our informational sessions like you are today. And of course, with faculty, um, you'll likely be able to visit their office hours or perhaps in, um, get involved in uh, organizations that they sponsor or sit as an advisor for. So those are great ways to get involved. But then, of course, sometimes um, emotional concerns can rise to a level that maybe our family members or our friends aren't quite equipped to help us with. And sometimes we need a professional who can step in and help us with those concerns. And of course, here on camp campus, we do have the Counseling and Psychological Services um, who offers um, free services to students. So I encourage you to visit their website. They host all types of events um, focused on mental health, um, which is so important and is, is a great part of self-care. And they'll be able to, um, to help you with any concern that maybe rises beyond the level of what a family member or a friend might be able to help you with. So with that in mind, I'd like to head back to our panelists and see if you could share with us a little bit about how you built a campus family um, that was emotionally supportive for you here at FSU. If there's anyone who wants to jump in first. <laughs> Go ahead, Mira. Thank you so much. So my situation is a little bit different because I was born and raised in Tallahassee. So my family actually lives in Tallahassee. So I actually live with them. So it's the about building a campus community has been different since I live at home and then I get transportation and hang out on campus and then go back home. It's a little bit of a different situation than I think than some of the other students may have. But I thought it'd be important to uh, just discuss that a little bit. But in regards to building a campus family and things like that, I worked on getting involved with multiple different organizations, such as the University of Choice, but also the Service Scholar Program and the Social Justice Living Learning Community, because those are, those are also things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about community service and advocacy for those with disabilities and learning about social justice and the importance of breaking down barriers when it comes to ableism. So finding your kind of niche in the organizations that are offered at FSU, I think is really important in regards to building that campus family and um, building a core of people who you can rely on who are outside of your family and outside of your traditional bubble, so to speak. Yeah, and and we have such a diverse offering of organizations. So I think it's it, there really is something for everyone to find their own little niche that they fit into. Uh, Nimna or Carly, did you want to add to that? Sure. Yeah. Oh, Carly, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I, on the other hand, am about, I'm from Florida originally, I'm from South Florida, but I'm about as far away as I can get from home while still being in the same state. And this is the furthest I've ever moved because I was born in Fort Myers and I just moved a couple places within the town throughout my life up until this point. In fact, I, at home, I am closer to Cuba than I am here, which mile, mileage wise, which is, always seems to amuse people. But uh, like Mira was saying, part of that was UOC. That's certainly where I found the most people who are accepting an understanding of my disability. I actually got into that through a class called Engage 100, a specific section that's offered for students with disabilities through SDRC at that time, now OAS. And through that, I met the president of University of Choice at that time, as well as J.R. Harding, our faculty advisor, who's a professor in the College of Business. So I had that avenue as well. My college, the College of Music is an interesting social environment because it's kind of a smaller unit within FSU. It's about 1200 students, which in fact is one of the largest music schools in the country. 
most of them are only a couple hundred students, but it's a, a much smaller program relative to others at FSU. In fact, there's only one other student in my major who plays the same instrument as me. And through that, those kinds of connections, I was able to make a lot of friends who have the same interests and spend much of their day doing the same thing I do. As a matter of proximity, but also just the deeper connections we were able to form through that. Yeah, absolutely. And we are offering that Engage 100 course um, this fall as well. I believe it's going to be on Thursdays at 3.30. Um, so for anyone who's interested, they can go ahead and, and reach out to our office if they'd like to talk more about that. And then Nimna, would you like to join it? Um, would you like to add? Of course, yeah. So I'll kind of just echo what Mira and Carly kind of said, but you know, I think finding that supportive family at a school as large as FSU, you know, really is just finding what space on campus feels like home to you. You know, in my personal experience, you know, I started working for FSU Campus Rec, I think the first day of my freshman year. You know, I still do two years later. And you know, that entire environment has really become, you know, a second home to me, you know, the people, the place, the atmosphere. Um, so it really is just finding those people you share passions with that also encourage you, they motivate you, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and just taking the initiative to kind of just go out and explore just new spaces to figure out where you fit in and just feel secure here. Yeah, and I, I love that idea of getting outside of your comfort zone and exploring um, because we do have so many diverse opportunities here and sometimes it, it just might not be something that you've encountered before. Um, so it's always great to, you know, try it once. Um, you can always decide not to go back, but you never know. It might be something like, like your experience where you're still there two years later. So it's fantastic. Moving on to our next um, area where a lot of students um, need support, um, we do have financial concerns that a lot of students face. And I think this one, my, my idea behind this is that I wanted to move beyond the idea of just calling home to ask mom and dad for money, right? Um, of course, every family has different financial resources that they can offer to their student. And that, that's great. It's a great way to support students. But again, we are moving from that shared responsibility to that increasing independence. So with that in mind, I wanted to focus on ideas here um, where we're increasing a student's independence and where they're becoming their own primary provider. So in terms of family support that can be offered outside of just, you know, depositing money um, in your student's account, it's always a great idea if you can research and refer your student to any available campus resources or scholarships. And we are gonna talk in more detail about those under campus supports. And of course, you may know about things that are specific to your locality um, where, you, um, where you're originally from. And so it's great if you can access those resources as well. Um, families can do a great job assisting in job searches. They can do mock interviews with their student. They can help them talk about what they should wear to the interview. Um, they can help them write resumes, write um, cover letters, and maybe even look for jobs in job searches. So there's a lot of great ways that families can assist um, students in accessing a job that will then provide financial resources for them. And of course, one of the most important things that families can do is help to teach those budgeting skills. Um, you know, we have this amount of money and we have these amount of expenses. How can we make those two pieces work together? So those are some ways that you can offer support as a family member without just writing a check um, to your student, but rather helping them increase their own financial independence. Now, as a family member, some of these next campus supports we're gonna talk about, it's good for you to be familiar with because you can refer your student to them. But also if you're a student um, whose family um, maybe isn't able to just write that check or to give you those financial supports, it's important to know about um, those campus resources that are available to help you. And of course, the first one is applying for financial aid. Um, and this is just from our Office of Financial Aid here on campus. Um, they do have a direct link to the FAFSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And this will help you access any type of government loans um, or perhaps grants that are available. 
The next thing we have is scholarships. And I actually have two links for this because one of them is specific to FSU. And so this is FSU for you. There are so many scholarships on here and they range from being very broad in their requirements to being very specific in what you're studying and where you plan to work. But it's absolutely worth the time to fill this out because they do give away a tremendous amount of money. Um, and of course, any amount is very helpful. The second um, scholarships that are available are what we call biz, uh, private scholarships. So these are not necessarily specific to Florida State, um, but they can be used to pay for your tuition and fees at Florida State. And so if you scroll through here, you'll see um, more information about it. And then they also offer just an entire list with links um, to those scholarships that you might be eligible for. So scholarships are a great way um, to get free money um, just for being a good student. Um, another way, of course, to support yourself financially is to um, obtain a job. And we do have the Career Center here on campus, which is just an absolutely tremendous resource. They will take you through the whole process of getting a job. They will do mock interviews with you, write resumes, write cover letters. Um, and they also have this null network here, which is a fantastic resource for finding jobs, internships, and other career related opportunities that I highly recommend you visit. In addition to the Career Center, we have CHA. Um, CHA is the Center for Health Advocacy and Wellness on campus, and they actually offer a financial wellness program, um, which will help you with all of these financial goals that they've had listed here. Um, and then of course, they do have some resources as well that you might visit. After CHA, we do offer financial wellness seminars. Um, and this is offered through Regions Bank. Um, so they have um, some seminars that I think are offered online currently um, with some dates and times here that you can always sit in on and talk about those basic banking needs that you might have related to your finances. And then of course, we know that sometimes regardless of um, accessing all of our resources, Sometimes things just fall a little bit short financially. Um, and in that case, at FSU, we never want you to have to make the choice between paying the bills and having food on your table. So I wanted to include here under financial independence that we do have the Food for Thought Pantry here on campus. It is located um, in the stadium in University Center A, and they have a tremendous amount of food resources for you. You can visit as frequently as you need to, um, and they just ask that you take um, one bag of food per day, but you can come back as many times as you need to. Um, so if your financial resources are tight, we don't want you to feel that you have to make that choice um, between putting food on the table and paying other bills. You can always visit our Food for Thought Pantry in the case of, um, of, of just needing a little extra assistance that way. Okay, so moving on from financial support, um, with the last um, type of support we're gonna talk about is academic support. And in this case, we want to make sure that we're enhancing the student's learning experience. Um, there's some easy ways for families to get involved. Um, of course, it's important to have those conversations with your student um, where you discuss any concerns that they might be having academically, where you discuss their pro progress, and of course, those goals. And these are things that are always developing and changing. So it's important um, to touch base with them periodically, um, just to check in and see how things are going, see if you're still on the path that your student wants to be on, or perhaps maybe um, they're considering something else. Another way that families can support is during those conversations about your goals, the students' goals and pro um, progress, you can talk about how scheduling is looking and how planning's looking. And this is something um, that's really important for students with disabilities 
because as a family member, you likely know your students' needs very well. Um, and so you might talk to them about, hey, remember how in high school you tended to do better in your morning classes? So what do you think about taking that class in the morning instead of the afternoon? So you can use your knowledge of your students' needs and what um, conditions they learn best under to support them in those conversations about scheduling and planning. The same with test preparation, you know, um, you can talk to them about, hey, I'm, I'm a little concerned that you stayed up all night studying um, because I know it, it's really hard for you to focus when you're tired. Um, so these are some things that, that you can talk about during those conversations on their progress and their goals, um, just to help um, support them in the areas that you know they need best. And then of course, as we talked about earlier, knowing about these resources that are here on campus you can serve as a reminder to them um, when they do come to you with a concern. Um, say, hey, I remember um, FSU has this resource available. Have you tried that out yet? So those are just some great ways that you can support them academically, even though you might not be there with them checking their work each night um, when they come home from school. So in terms of campus supports that can help um, students academically, of course, you can start with the basic just attending class in your professor's office hours. So our professors um, oftentimes are field experts. They are leading researchers in their field and they can offer you a wealth of knowledge um, about the, the subject matter that they teach. So reaching out to them during class and during their office hours is a great way to enhance your learning. Um, sometimes even once we've done that, we may still need a little bit more um, assistance. And there are two things that are offered through the ACE Center that I wanted to make sure you're aware of. And the first is a personal academic consultant. And this is a fantastic resource. Um, perhaps if you have disability related symptoms, um, such as executive functioning concerns like planning, time management, organizing, they will help you um, develop strategies and skills to address some of those concerns and help mediate the effects of them. So we highly recommend reaching out to them if you have those concerns. And of course, at the ACE Center, which is the Academic Center for Excellence, they also offer one-on-one -on -one and group tutoring, um, and they will offer it um, in specific subjects. So they're a great resource if you are still struggling with a, a subject, um, despite reaching out to other supports for help. And then um, in addition to the A Center, we also have the Writing Center on campus. And um, I'm not sure if this site is gonna load for me, um, but the Writing Center will help you with exactly that, reading and writing. Um, so if you're having difficulty with, um, again, those executive functioning skills like organizing your thoughts on a paper, um, they will help you um, work through that and develop skills and strategies for addressing your concern. And then, of course, another way to enhance your learning if you want to take it to the next level or perhaps it's a requirement of your program is to reach out for an uh, internship. And as I mentioned un um, earlier under finding jobs, the Knoll Network is a tremendous resource for this um, because they do have all types of jobs, um, full time, part time internships. Um, you can schedule mock interviews with them. You can uh, register to learn about their career center events where they host career fairs. So just a tremendous resource in terms of not only financial on the financial end of, of perhaps um, getting a job, but also on the academic end if you would like an internship to support um, your academic experience. And then finally, of course, registering with our office um, which as a student with disabilities, um, we highly recommend that you do. Um, we can provide academic supports for you in the form of accommodations in the classroom. We also have transportation services, housing accommodations, um, some things that we call administrative accommodations um, that can be very helpful for you in enhancing your academic experience. So with that in mind, um, I'd like to turn it back to our panel and see if you could share a little bit with us about what campus supports were particularly helpful for you in academic terms. And you're welcome to just jump in. Um, Nimna, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, 
you know, I think in terms of academics, I really just want to brag on the ACE Tutoring Lab. You know, I think it really is just such a valuable resource for students who, I think especially in, you know, your first year here, you just might be struggling to stay on top of, you know, schoolwork and just adjusting to college. So it's just nice to kind of have that helping hand to make sure you don't fall behind in class. You know, it's a resource that I used a lot my first year at FSU when, you know, I wasn't doing as well as I wanted to. So I would highly recommend just taking advantage of it. Yeah, and they offer such a wide range of services. So they are, are really a fantastic resource. Mira, I think you had your hand up as well. I do, thank you so much. So um, I have a couple things. I'd say, first of all, register with the OAS as soon as possible. I registered right off the bat, like right after getting in. And it's they've been really, really wonderful. Of course, you guys have been great. Um, because over the time, sometimes like your disability for me, like I started getting my migraines, I have low vision. So sometimes there'd be a lot more eye strain. And so like, they were really helpful. I could sit down and talk one on one with my with my individual like counselor who I work with. And like, he helped me figure out like, how what edits I needed to make to my accommodations to make learning um, in the online learning environment easier and things like that, especially with COVID and things like that. So that was extremely helpful and beneficial for me. And I'd say the counseling center was also really helpful for offering that sort of levying support to talk about the stresses and things that you've been going through. And it helps you th therein to do better in your academic success for academic success, because you know, you're not thinking about 30 different things, you know, it's really helpful in that way. So I just wanted to talk about those as well. And, um, I also, some of my professors would offer tutoring going into office hours and things like that. I took a foreign language course, which was very difficult. I took Chinese. And so I would work one-on-one -on -one with my professor at the library. The Strozier is a really wonderful library to go and study and work at. So I just wanted to also do a shout out to the Strozier library. Yes, Mira, I love that you brought up the university counseling services at, at this point, um, because that was actually the reason that I talked about emotional support first, right? If emotionally we're not in a place where we feel safe, where we feel comfortable, it's very difficult um, to then focus on our academics and to really give our best there. So I, I really like that you brought up the counseling services as part of academic support because it is so important to be in a good place emotionally so that you can turn your attention to academic um, supports. And Carly, did you want to jump in here or are you good? Sure, I can say a little bit. Uh, agreed with Mira about OAS. I actually registered with them before I started classes. It was when I came up for orientation, which in my case was a couple weeks before classes started. And this is the thing you have to realize about OAS is they're on your side, but they have a lot of people to help. So you have to be able to ask for help. And it's there for you, but just the process is different. You know, as a college student, you have to disclose your disability, provide documentation, and negotiate with professors. And if you can do that, I think you'll find a great resource in that. I certainly have. And in my case, freshman and sophomore year, I lived in an LLC, which is Living Learning Community. They were usually major or program specific. And there are a couple of different examples on campus. Mine in particular was for music majors. And as part of that, you're just living around a bunch of people who are in the same program of study. Oftentimes there are shared study and social spaces, particularly in my LLC, we had a lot of the same classes, freshman and sophomore music major track in the actual dorm building. So you could walk to it from your hallway. The whole thing was you could go to class in your pajamas, which some people did. I personally did. But even just having that social environment with other people around who were taking the same classes, having the same struggles, or maybe, you know, they had academic strengths in areas where I did not. That was a tremendous resource, just living with those people, being surrounded by them, and having friends in that that I could call upon if I started to have trouble in a class. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Those living learning communities, really, because they're so particular to what you're studying, are a tremendous academic resource because they're going through the same classes that you are. So you can talk about, hey, what did you think the professor meant by that? Or, hey, I missed this in class. Could you could you share with me what you have? So definitely classmates, um, whether that's within a living learning community or just within the class itself, they're definitely a tremendous resource academically. 
Okay, so we are just going to go ahead and start wrapping things up here. And I'd like to open this final um, slide up to our panelists for you to share just any words of wisdom um, that you would like with our audience today about making that transition from the shared responsibility at home to independent living here at college. Go ahead, Mira. Thank you so much. I'd say, I know this isn't necessary for everyone, but coming like, I know that, that I will be facing some challenges and failure, you know, it happens sometimes, but being able to grow from those challenges is really important. And I think that's, that's it will be well, all will be well. And as long as we keep working hard and pushing forward, we'll, we'll be all right. So I feel like that sense, that sense of growth is important. Absolutely, within every challenge, there's an opportunity. And, um, and hopefully um, that leads to growth in a positive direction. Yeah, um, I'll go ahead. Um, I think my best piece of advice would just be talk to everyone and challenge yourself. You know, your years at college are just such a formative time to just find out what you enjoy doing, you know, and what type of people you enjoy you know, being around and who you want to surround yourself with. So don't hold yourself back in that regard. Um, don't be afraid to make a mistake here and there. You know, you're going to learn some really valuable lessons, you know, through your experiences. And those lessons are going to come from just, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. You know, FSU is such just a large school, you know, and with that size really comes a plethora of opportunity. You know, I've been here for two years and I've yet to even graze the surface of everything FSU has to offer. So just go out, you know, explore and enjoy yourself. You know, I promise you there's something to love here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's definitely a safer environment um, for exploring things um, and for and for making, you know, mistakes, not not huge ones, but yeah, but it's definitely a safer environment for um, for exploration. And then Carly, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I totally agree with that. The growth mindset. It's so important, you know, seeing everything as a learning experience. Your network is bigger than you think it is, bigger than you can imagine, really, which is something I'm still learning about. But one of the things that I've realized now after being in undergrad for three years is college can be scary. It's a big event in your life. But I don't know there's going to be another point in your life past this where people are so forgiving of you and willing to help you. You know, you have that time to make mistakes because you're not necessarily responsible for anyone else. Like when you get older, if you choose to have a family and these things, you know, you don't have that same kind of pressure of going into work every day and having a full-time job. You're a student, you're supposed to learn, you know, that's the focus of what you're doing. And there are people all around you, your professors, your peers, people at OAS, you know, and other resources on campus who are totally willing to help you with anything if you just reach out and ask. You know, you just have to have the courage to do that and know enough of what you want and what you need help with. And if you can do that, I think you'll find it here. Absolutely. I love that. It, it can be a challenging time as we transition into that independent living, but it is important for students to know they're not alone. There are so many campus supports available and of course um, the family supports that, that your family provides for you. So it may be challenging, but you certainly don't have to go through it alone and we will do our best to support you in any way that we can. So with that, I would um, like to, I'm going to go ahead and share some information about the OAS. Um, and then I will um, let Carly share a little bit of information about the University of Choice with you. Um, so if you ever need support in an area, emotional, financial, academic, um, or perhaps you have another concern and you're just not sure who to turn to on campus, you can always start with the OAS. Um, so even if it's a concern that's not related to your academic housing, dietary or transportation accommodations, you can still reach out to us. We do have walk-in hours available on most days of the week when we return in person in the fall. 
Um, and we are happy um, to get you connected with the resource that is best outfitted to support you. Um, you can always email our main um, line, which is oas at fsu.edu. And of course, you can always call our main line at 850-644-9566. And when you're in person, we always um, appreciate you stopping by to say hello or for in-person appointments that you schedule. We are kind of right in the heart of campus at 108 Student Services Building. Um, our street address is 874 Traditions Way. And of course, um, this email or this PowerPoint will be posted um, with the pre uh, recording online. Um, so you will have access to this information through that. And then um, Carly, if you would like to share some information about the University of Choice as a resource as well. Sure, I'd love to. So I've been involved with this group since my freshman year. I've been president since spring of my sophomore year, so I'm very familiar with the group. I just dropped our email address in the chat, and that's the most direct way to reach us, it, you know, just by email. You're also welcome to reach out to Mira or I directly, as well as our faculty advisor, James Harding, in the College of Business. University of Choice is easy to find on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram, as well as Null Central, which is FSU's sort of social platform for all of the registered student or organizations at FSU. We are partners with OAS, but we let them handle more of the legal side of things, accommodations and supports. We are here to provide more social support as a community group for students with disabilities. So some of the examples of things we've done are education and outreach initiatives. We frequently present at conferences, often with panel discussions like we're doing now. Actually, just this past month, we attended the Family Cafe Conference in Orlando. Mira and I were there with a couple other of our student leaders. We have one doctoral candidate who often will present research presentations and then we speak to our personal experiences as students with disabilities. We also host the flagship event for Disability Awareness Week, bringing in speakers. In the past, we've had Paralympic athletes, actresses, musicians with disabilities. This year, we'll have a pilot who is missing limbs. It's really a remarkable, remarkable person. So things like that, we meet bi-weekly and we would be happy to have you if anyone here is interested. We are always welcoming new members because we enjoy offering that community for students with sense of disabilities at FSU. Wonderful, thank you, Carly. Okay, with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I would like to just open up it up to our audience if anyone has any questions. Um, that they would like to ask. Okay, um, since we don't have any additional questions for, from our audience, um, I am going to go ahead and thank everyone for attending today. Um, again, the um, materials, um, usually we can get our PowerPoint and other accessible formats of it uploaded pretty quickly um, to our website. The recording might take two or three days um, so that we can get transcripts with it. Um, but if you would like to go back and review um, the information from today's meeting, it will be available on our website. Um, so thank you again for attending. Um, if you are one of our panelists, um, I would just ask that you stay on for a moment so that I can speak to you separately. Um, but everyone else, thank you for um, joining us today and we hope to see you again soon. Bye.